And thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I need, yeah, I need some help with the presentation. Thank you also for the local teams for translating everything in uh, Vietnamese. And uh, so my name is Yichen. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. And it's a great pleasure to be part of the training and also to be able to have the chance to engage with you all. So um, as um, moderator kindly introduced, like I am the mobility officer at ICLE World Secretariat. Um, yeah, could you please move to the next slide? So for those who are not uh, familiar with um, ICLE, ICLE is a global network of more than 2,500 local and regional governments worldwide. Um, um, ICLE is also active in more than 125 countries and we have 24 offices worldwide. So could you move to the next one? Thank you. Um, so in today's session, I will be mainly talking about uh, the basic concepts of low emission zones and also some good practices uh, in mainly in East Asian cities, um, which includes uh, Seoul, Taoyuan and Suzhou. And when we have time, I will also introduce a little bit about the um, LEC implementation in Barcelona. And then it will be followed by some key takeaways uh, from this presentation. Um, yeah, next please. So I think you are, uh, you must have also learned from other trainings and through previous presentations about low emission zone. So basically it refers to areas where the most polluting vehicles are prohibited from traveling. And this concept was first introduced in Sweden uh, and mainly aimed at stimulating like old heavy trucks and also buses. Um, and then you also have the concept of zero emission zone. So basically it refers to the areas in cities where only zero emission vehicles are allowed. And currently um, the, on the market, there, that refers to also battery electric vehicles and also hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, et cetera. And of course, also in some, in a lot of cities that also includes uh, other sustainable modes of transport, such as walking, cycling, electric vehicles, and et cetera. Um, so when, why are we talking about low emission or zero emission zone? Um, could you move to the next slide? Yeah, so the concept was first introduced uh, in reaction to the air quality crisis in, uh, in Europe and of course also worldwide as air pollution has become the world's biggest environmental health risk according to WHO. And uh, in, for instance, in Europe, the toxic air is also estimated to decrease life expectancy of the Europeans by an average of almost one year. And also some evidence shows, especially for the poor people, they are disproportionately affected by air pollution. So that's why um, there are some studies, for instance, made by Transport and Environment, which is an NGO in Europe. They did some studies and it reveals that um, the evidence suggested existing uh, low emission zones have already effectively reduced uh, air pollution, in particular the uh, particular matters and also um, nitrogen um, dioxide, etc. And of course, uh, more than um, uh, air pollution, I mean, apart from the benefits of improving air quality, could you move to the next slide, please? And it also has other benefits, which includes, for instance, reducing emissions um, and also um, reducing congestion and also incre increasing safety for other road users and especially uh, vulnerable road users and also it will also help um, in encourage the deployment of zero emission vehicles and also the establishment of infrastructure and also its adoption uh, its adoption and uh, of course like eventually the aim is to help improve the liability uh, the livability of the local residents in these cities where low emission zones are implemented um, and next i will also yeah introduce mainly for instance the stakeholder engaged part in so in Taoyuan and also in Suzhou and Barcelona so um, as you might um, have known, the Seoul is the capital of South Korea and it is home to 9.7 million citizens. And it is hence the one of the most densely populated, populated cities in the world. And like many other cities worldwide, Seoul and also the transportation, uh, tra its transportation um, system faces like some challenges, like also increasing greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution, and also congestion, et cetera. And um, in the city, the transportation sector accounts for around one-fifth of its total emissions um, based on the data in 2018. 
and um, faced with these challenges, so uh, adopted a comprehensive climate strategy, which is called Promise of So, at, actually at uh, the Equally World Congress in 2015. And then they aim to reduce the emissions by 40% by 2030 with, uh, compared to the 2000, 2005 level. And of course, um, So also has a long tradition of strategizing um, uh, climate change related policies and also envisions uh, its transportation um, vision to be environmental friendly and also people friendly. So um, in this context, um, could you move to the next one? Um, in this context, they have introduced the concept of low emission zone and also green transportation zone. So in 2017 already, um, the Seoul Metropolitan Government, they banned these um, low grade vehicles, which includes a total of uh, 400,000 uh, like na national wide and also 100,000 within the metropolitan region. So that includes from driving in Seoul and during these uh, severe air pollution um, episodes of the season. And also in 2007 or 2018, um, the, low, the concept of low emission zone also has been extended to uh, other adjacent uh, local governments around Seoul. So these will help also control the impact of emissions and also air pollution in the metropolitan region. So how does the green transportation zone work exactly? Um, basically, like at the Seoul metropolitan region, they designed this Hanyang green transport area, which is uh, in Seoul's uh, inner city in a city wall area. And then this area covers eight neighborhoods and it covers uh, around 16.7 kilo square kilometers. And also the Seoul metropolitan region, they built an ICT system, basically also restructuring the roads and also limiting these vehicle, these polluted vehicles operation in the, con uh, in the congested areas. Also uh, mainly on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And also it, it includes like weekdays and also holidays. So how this system is enforced, basically it is monitored through the traffic management system, which um, is uh, implemented in 45 access points of the whole area of the green transportation zone. And uh, there are also some measures when, for instance, the vehicles are not compliant with these regulations. That means like when you don't, um, when the vehicles are um, more polluted than um, great, like the levels, um, below grade five. Um, that means like you need to pay around 73 euros for your first violation. And also the fine will increase if you, um, for instance, um, reaches your third violation. So these uh, program, of course, there are also some exemptions, which includes uh, like emergency vehicles or the vehicles that are uh, used by people with re reduced mobility, et cetera. So as such, like, um, this program is also in, expected also to enhance the public's awareness on environment. Um, could you move to the next one? Yes. Um, and apart from that, also the um, SMG, they also offer some financial support for the residents living in the green transportation zone and also some uh, also work related vehicle owners to help them to upgrade their vehicles, um, uh, pollutant reduction devices. Um, that would include, for instance, um, provisionally, the Seoul, will, the Seoul metropolitan region, they will offer support of up to uh, 2.5 uh, million uh, Korean won, which is e equivalent to around uh, 1,800 euros for the um, residents to buy low emission, uh, low pollution vehicles. And apart from that, also uh, as an additional subsidy, if they, if they decide to buy a new vehicle. And apart from that, they also offer um, around 3 million Korean won, which is equal to 2,200 euros for, for the vehicles to install the um, DPF devices, uh, which is a diesel part of particulate filter device for scrapping, scrapping the old vehicles. Um, and that applies to the vehicles that are below 3.5 uh, tons of gross, kilo, uh, gross vehicle weight. Um, next one, please. Yeah. And then, so um, based on the achievements the, um, or the benefits the current green transportation zone has brought in 2020 in November, the Seoul metropolitan region also announced that it will additionally add two 
uh, more areas as part of the green transportation zone, which includes the Gangnam and also Yuzhou neighborhoods. Um, and in these two um, green transportation areas, some other uh, smart mobility solutions are also uh, deployed. For instance, also the use of autonomous buses will be also tested uh, there, and also some um, e-mobility um, charging infrastructure, et cetera, will also be uh, provided in these two areas. So how does Seoul basically engage with the citizens or engage with the relevant stakeholders in expanding these areas? So basically under the applicable law, the city government they already has some discussions with, for instance, um, the Ganangu office and also the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport, and also the ancient metropolitan city, which is the neighboring city, um, that is adjacent to so and also other local transportation committees and then they finish the review and then um, that's why these two areas are um, designated and of course also citizens opinions have also been collected through the administrative notice and also other uh, processes um, and then that's why the coverage of these two zones was decided based on uh, for instance, land utilization and also econ economic activities, etc. And apart from the expansion of transportation zone, of course, so has also a range of other uh, measures to encourage encourage the citizens and also encourage the uptake of sustainable modes of transport. As you can see also here on the on the slides, uh, it's the Sejong Dai road, uh, road, and then they expanded, they basically it was a 12 lane road before, uh, which is hardly seen probably in any other cities. And then so reduced this lane uh, and converted them to walkways and also uh, through this uh, pedestrian forest paths project and also to um, establish or expanded the width, uh, the width of the bike lanes. And apart from that, of course, they are also in, uh, increasing the number of uh, city bikes um, and also um, installing like more uh, people, uh, more uh, bike lanes and also limiting, for instance, car speed uh, in the inner city um, and also, for instance, more crossworks and also providing EVs, et cetera. Um, so currently, for instance, in so there are also these green shuttle buses that are running and are connecting different neighborhoods of the city. Um, so as such, uh, could you, yeah. Um, as you can see here is also some uh, preliminary result of the green transportation zone. So since uh, its implementation, um, the Seoul Metropolitan Government has observed that there has been a significant reduction of total traffic and also um, there's also reduction, a uh, very obvious reduction also of the grade five vehicles, which is the vehicle that is prohibited from traveling in the green transportation zone, also by 20 points by 23.5% uh, as compared to the um, December 2019. So, and also accordingly, the uh, fine particular matters have also reduced the significant significantly, that includes the PN10 and also PN2.5. Um, and of course, in general, the uh, restructuring of these roads and also streets has also led to more walking spaces and less traffic in general, and hence also improving the air quality in, in Seoul and also help address some of the issues related to, for instance, uh, traffic congestion and also to uh, help Seoul to move towards uh, sustainable urban mobility in general. Um, and the next example that I'm gonna give is about Taoyuan. So for those who are not so familiar with Taoyuan, it's a city uh, located in Taiwan, which is the main entrance to Taiwan actually. And it has 2.2 uh, million uh, inhabitants in the city. And probably you are also familiar that Taoyuan International Airport is actually one of the busiest airports actually in East Asia. And Taoyuan City currently is also the chair of Eclipse Ecologist Community, which is uh, the first city network that is committed to a sustainable urban freight, uh, urban freight uh, transport future. Um, next one, please. Um, so in Taoyuan, for instance, uh, it was there, uh, they have set up the air quality protection 
protection zone, protection zone, and it was set up, it was led by the Environmental Bureau. And in this zone, there's also a voluntary laboring system that is uh, in place to help inspect and also rate these um, polluted vehicles. And they, um, the polluting vehicles are basically prohibited from entering the, this zone. And the next example that I'm going to give is mainly about a demonstration project that is um, currently in Dashi. So under the ecologist uh, community, we are currently implementing five uh, demonstration projects in, Tao in, in Taoyuan, and one of them is called Dashi. And so uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, background, uh, Dashi is actually um, a district of like historical and also commercial importance in Taoyuan. And then the old streets are often mixed used streets with commercial residential areas and also public space. But the thing is like, um, given the background of that, uh, the local residents uh, they are complaining of the air and the noise pollution and also congestion because of the increased traffic volume and also congestion. And that's why the city has hosted a series of consultations also with the local residents and the logistic providers. And then that's uh, through the uh, various consultations, they proposed the establishment of a solar powered consolidation center and also a demarcation of a traffic uh, quiet station. Um, and I will introduce to you a little bit later about how the engagement was done. Yeah, exactly. So Dashi, as you can see also from the photo, um, the low emission consolidation station was actually formerly a, pub, a public parking area and the, it functions now as a shared warehousing and a transfer station. So basically the truck drivers, they will collect the um, shipments from bigger trucks and then to redistribute, redistribute them with small electric scooters. And then also in this area, they have also adopted automated, automated, automated uh, technology also for more efficient storage and also delivery system. Uh, next, please. And then also, for instance, in this silent and low speed zone, um, as you can see also from the photo, uh, how Taiwan City has illustrated, um, this is a zone where they only allow electric scooters to go through. And also it gives priorities, for instance, to also pedestrians and the cyclists as such also, of course, also helps improve uh, the safety of the uh, vulnerable road users. Um, next one, please. So exactly how did Taoyuan approach the stakeholders that were involved in these projects? So basically, based on the materials that were sent or shared by the colleagues from ecologist uh, office in Taoyuan, they mentioned that more than 60 meetings were held actually with uh, multiple stakeholders that we include, of course, also public and private sectors and also logistic companies and um, relevant associations and local communities, etc. And they've also done, uh, for instance, expert consultations uh, and also community interviews and also some working meetings and capacity building related activities, etc. So for instance, from also interviews, um, next one, please. Yeah, so basically also uh, from the interviews, they try to identify the local needs of different stakeholders. Just to give you an example, for instance, for the logistic managers, they will say like most of the managers, they agree that um, the greening of a supply chain is actually an inevitable development of future logistics, but they couldn't understand the concept. So that's why the colleagues from um, Taoyuan um, Ecologist Office and also the city officials, they try to communicate with them um, the concept or the um, co-benefits of introducing the ecologist concept into the plan, into the city planning and also into the general benefits for the local business there. And then their feedback and all suggestions were collected, of course. Um, Exactly. So as you can see, for instance, from the table, it's basically like different groups of stakeholders, and then um, they try to differentiate their different needs and to see how to address those needs basically within the whole framework of ecologistics. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, um, for instance, also from these charts, and um, we can also see like how um, freight traffic is affecting the local businesses and also the local residents. And then by identifying 
um, the needs of uh, introducing, for instance, um, environmentally friendly vehicles. They um, came up with the concept of the low speed zone or traffic zone that I previously mentioned, and also the concept of the um, consolidation station uh, at the periphery of the Dashi Street. Uh, next one, please. Here is also, there are also more photos about the mobile workshops the um, uh, ecologist office colleagues took and also together with the city, city governments as well as other stakeholders. So what they did is just that you can see on the right side, there is a mobile uh, a map. It's basically they walk through the whole uh, district of Dashi and then try to um, understand the history, also the activity, economic activities behind it, and then try to um, come up with solutions that would the best, uh, let's say, accommodate the different interests and all different needs of the stakeholders. Um, next one. So just to put it in a nutshell, so basically um, through the Dashi case, uh, like the public and also private stakeholders were involved in the uh, in the consultation and also in the various meetings. And of course, within the local governments, it also includes not only transportation bureau, but also some um, environmental bureaus or other relevant um, parties. And uh, apart from that, of course, you need to engage also with the uh, representative from the um, industry, from the private companies, and also from uh, um, other research institutions or uh, academia who are more neutral parties in this process. And of course, also the local residents. Mm -hmm. Could you move to the next one? Yeah, so the third case is about Suzhou, which is um, it's a, a prefectural level tourist city in Jiangsu province, which is located in uh, in the east of China, and then it's about 100 kilometers uh, away uh, uh, from Shanghai. And now it is one of the major central cities in the Yangtze Delta area, uh, and also it's a national high-tech industrial base. Um, because of the uh, rapid economic, economic development and also um, the, the growth in the population, the city of course now is currently also transitioning to a highly urbanized society and hence they are also challenged with issues related to air pollution, congestion, and also they also face uh, issues like a space scarcity also for um, logistic vehicles, etc. So against this background, uh, yes, um, against this background, um, the Suzhou government, uh, they basically researched and also released a policy, a right-of-way policy for the new energy logistic vehicles in its urban area. Um, the new energy vehicles includes, of course, also like electric vehicles or fuel cell um, uh, vehicles and hybrid vehicles. And uh, as such, given this policy, basically in um, in its ancient city, um, it's demarcated as the green logistic demarcation, uh, demonstration zone. And then in the zone, um, the new energy um, logistic vehicles are allowed to park temporarily um, in the vehicle lanes, especially in the off hour, um, off peak hours um, for its loading and also unloading activities. And apart from that, of course, the city also tried to provide more uh, parking lots for the for these uh, new freight um, vehicles. So this is yeah. Um, these are basically the three examples are drawn from a paper that ECLA has produced. It's called Ecologists in East, East Asia. So of course, if you want to read a bit more about this case and how the stakeholder engagement was done and also how the cities are, um, are promoting sustainable urban freight in general and also sustainable urban mobility in general, uh, feel free also to uh, reach out and I can also share the link later in the chat. Um, so the next case is focused on Barcelona, which is also, um, so we also got information from the colleagues from the metropolitan uh, area of Barcelona. And then as such, this information is also based on um, the previous, previous presentation that was done by, um, by the colleagues. Uh, so basically, um, Barcelona metropolitan area is one of the largest metropolitan areas in Europe, and it covers more than, um, it has more than 3.2 million inhabitants in this whole area. And then, uh, next one, please. And 
then the low emission zone in Barcelona basically is implemented within its uh, ring roads, um, and then it, it is an area that it covers uh, 95 um, square kilometers, which you can see from the map on the left, it's the green uh, area. And then it includes uh, Barcelona and also the municipalities adjacent to the ring roads, where basically the traffic of the most polluting vehicles are gradually um, restricted. And um, as you can see in the middle, they have like four labels. So the, these vehicles are basically restricted uh, from on a gradual basis, uh, depending on the DGT environmental label, uh, which are the, uh, the color labeled um, environmental labels. Um, and that it's also enforced from seven to eight, uh, from Monday to Friday, yes. So, um, uh, which is this, um, so how the, LEZ in Barcelona is in Bors. Basically, it's also quite similar to the green transportation zone in Seoul. For instance, the, uh, the vehicles, they are, uh, they are um, monitored by the automatic monitoring system. Uh, so in the whole metropolitan area, they have more than 120 license plate reading cameras, and then they will detect basically which vehicles um, are compliant with the regulations and also to be able to detect their labels. And these give the local authority also the details of the vehicles that are identified. And also it gives the information, for instance, um, if the uh, vehicles that are not compliant, they are subject also to penalties. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> um, probably, okay. Um, so basically, <clears throat> excuse me, um, apart from the penalty and also the exemptions that previous mentioned, of course, they also have this uh, information website. Um, so if you click on it, then you can see um, actually it's very uh, informative and it includes, for instance, uh, questions about what the low emission zone is and about why we are, why the metropolitan area is implementing the scheme and also like some basic free, uh, free frequently asked questions, um, like about permits or about some exemptions, et cetera. So as, um, excuse me, so as um, um, the, pre the preliminary also analysis shows that basically the total number of the visits on these websites has already exceeded 1 million records. And then they also receive more than 5,000 5, calls uh, every month. And then there are also more than 70,000 uh, requests on user-related reg registrations uh, for the exemptions, et cetera. So apart from that, of course, in um, Barcelona, the implementation of the low emission zone also goes hand in hand um, uh, with efforts to improve public transport. That includes also like some subsidies to um, purchase low emission vehicles and also support of uh, the vehicles in terms of taxes, in terms of toys and also other fees that are related to mobility. For instance, for, tran for transport, uh, you can opt for a free transport, tra free transport card for three years if you decide to remove or dismantle your old vehicles. Um, next one, please. So I think we are running a bit out of time, but just to sum up, um, low emissions also, so basically based on all these examples, and of, of course also in other cities uh, worldwide, it has um, demonstrated its benefits, uh, and also it has become a widespread policy, instru uh, policy instrument to regulate urban excesses, and it's based on what I have for instance, uh, presented before, you can also see it's a powerful tool actually to improve the air quality and also reduce emissions in these cities. And um, to um, successfully implement and the plan for the low emission zones, you, the, as local government officials, you have to also, of course, secure the support that would include the support from the business groups and also from different government authorities at the local and also regional level and also uh, different representatives of public interest groups, et cetera. So, and for cities, you should also run, uh, for instance, public uh, consultations and also public awareness raising campaigns to basically promote and uh, increase um, the understanding of how it works and also the benefits uh, that it will deliver, help also to address the concerns of the general public. 
And of course, more importantly, it is um, more than about keeping the citizens, citizens informed and how they operate and how they will be affected. It's also important to provide supporting measures that will include, for instance, some financial support for citizens and uh, small business to switch to clean vehicles and also to ensure that other sustainable transport modes are also provided and then to become more attractive. Um, I think that is more all for my presentation. Um, if you want to know more, of course, you can also browse our website. Um, thank you very much. I hope I didn't uh, uh, run over too much time. Thank you. <laughs>